Through five games, two basketball players both average 20 points per game. But player A's scores are 18, 20, 20, 20, and 22, while player B's are 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40. Player A is consistent while player B is all over the place. Their average is the same, but that doesn't tell you the most important part, the reliability. Standard deviation is the number that tells us about predictability and whether a player is steady, like player A, or scattered, like player B. In this video, we're not gonna start with a scary formula. We're gonna answer a simple question. On average, how far away is a typical number in a set from the group's average? That's the whole idea. We'll build a number that behaves like a typical distance. It isn't a simple average of distances, but it tracks spread in a way that's mathematically powerful. We're gonna build the answer, the formula, step-by-step, step, starting with distance, identifying the problem with just looking at distance, fixing that problem, and then arriving at our result, which is gonna be standard deviation. So let's start with the most intuitive idea, which is measuring how far each of players A's scores is from the average of 20. This distance is called deviation. So the score of 18 for player A is two points below the average or below the mean, which means its deviation, the deviation of 18, is negative two. We find that by subtracting the mean or the average from the actual score. On the other hand, the score of 22 is two points above the average, so its deviation is positive two, and we see that little distance here. The scores of 20 are right on the average, so their deviation is zero. If we put those together, player A's deviations are negative two, zero, 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 and positive two. And so to find the average distance away from the mean, we might try to add them all up, but watch what happens. We get negative two plus all the zeros plus positive two, and of course that total is zero. And this is the problem. The total is always zero, every time. That's because the mean is the perfect balance point. So the positive and negative deviations always cancel each other out. So the question we've identified that we don't know the answer to is, how can we find an average distance if this sum is always uselessly zero? Well, we need a way to make all these deviations positive, and the most powerful way to do that is to square them. That's gonna be our fix for this problem we identified. A negative number squared always becomes a positive number, and we can see here player A's deviations in particular become positive four, zero, 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 and positive four. Now with all the numbers positive, when we add them up, they can't cancel each other out. And squaring the deviations also has the nice side effect of giving more weight to values that are far from the mean, which we'll see later on is gonna be very useful. So we've decided to square our deviations so that when we add them up, they don't cancel each other out. These are player A's squared deviations, and when we sum them, we get positive eight. Remember, we're driving here toward average distance away from the mean, and if we say that these are squared distances away from the mean, we certainly wanna find the average of all these distances, which means we wanna divide this sum by the number of data points that we have. Well, we have five scores for player A, one, two, three, four, five, the 18, 20, 20, 20, and 22. So normally we would divide the sum eight by five, but now we run into our first small crucial correction. Instead of dividing by n equals five, we're gonna divide by n minus one. Why? Well, when we estimate spread from a sample, We've already used the sample mean to center the data. And basically that uses up one degree of freedom. So we divide by N minus one to avoid underestimating the true spread. In our case, of course, N is equal to five. So we're dividing by five minus one, we get eight divided by four, and that's equal to two. This number here, the two, is called the variance. We've found the variance for this data set. Based on how we've built this, we know that variance is the average squared distance. Now, let's pause for a second and remember what we've done so far. Remember, we hit a wall because our distances are deviations summed to zero. We fixed that by squaring them to get these five squared deviations. And then we found the average of those squared distances to get two, the variance. But if we think about what we have here, there's one weird problem left that we haven't fixed, and that's the units. Remember that we started with points, but then we squared everything. So all these squared deviations here, their units are in points squared. This is four points squared, zero points squared, etc. So when we add everything up and divide by n minus one to find variance, this variance value 
is in points squared. And what on earth is points squared? It doesn't really make any sense when we're talking about points. We need to get back to our original units. To get back to those original units, to just points, we need to undo the squaring that we did earlier, which we can do simply by taking the square root. The square root of 2 is about 1.41, and the square root of points squared as units is just points. So taking the square root of the variance 2 points squared gives us 1.41 points. And this here is our standard deviation. This is the answer to our original question. It tells us that for player A, a typical score is about 1.41 points away from their average of 20. A small number here for standard deviation means high consistency. And since standard deviation is a measure of consistency or reliability or predictability, it's useful to think about what happens when we manipulate our data set. So remember, player A's score set was 18, 20, 20, 20, and 22. That set of scores gave deviations of negative 2, 0, 0, 0, and 2, which gave squared deviations of 4, 0, 0, 0, and 4, which then gave a variance of 2 and a standard deviation of square root 2 or 1.41. Think about what happens, though, if we double each of player A's scores. So instead of 18, we double it to get 36, 20 doubles to 40, and 22 doubles to 44. If we double each score, what happens to standard deviation? Will it stay the same? Will it also double? Well, let's see. The mean here of this data set is 40. So the deviations are negative 4, 0, 0, 0, and positive 4. The deviations are double the original deviations. The squared deviations are now squares of the original squared deviations. And then when we find variance, we take the sum of those squared deviations, 16 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 16, gives us 32. We divide by n minus 1 and we get 8. So the variance is 8, which is 4 times the original variance. And standard deviation is square root of 8, which is equal to 2 root 2. And we can see that that standard deviation, 2 root 2, is double the original standard deviation of root 2, which tells us that when we double all the values in the data set, it also doubles the standard deviation. And that makes sense because doubling the values in the data set spreads the data out further. On the other hand, if we simply shift the values in the data set, let's say by five, we add five points to every score, what do we think will happen to standard deviation? Well, think about it. All we're doing here is moving this whole data set five units to the right, but we're not changing the spread of the data set. The deviations here are still just negative two, zero, 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 and two because the mean is 25 and 23 has a deviation or a distance of negative 2 from 25, and 27 has a distance or a deviation of 2 from 25. So we end up with the same set of deviations, which means we'll get the same set of squared deviations, the same variance of 2, and the same standard deviation of root 2, or approximately 1.41. So shifting the data set doesn't change standard deviation, but doubling the data set doubles the deviation. Now that you know how to find standard deviation step by step, let's see if you can try to find standard deviation for player B, who, remember, had scores of 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40. Well, just like with player A, we start with the mean, which is 20. 20 is the average of this data set. You can kind of see it visually, but if you're not sure, you can add up the values and divide by 5. So 10 plus 20 is 30, plus 30 is 60, plus 40 is 100. 100 divided by 5 is 20. That mean is 20 which means the deviations are the distance from 0 to 20, or negative 20, from 10 to 20, or negative 10, from 20 to 20, or 0, from 30 to 20, or positive 10, and from 40 to 20, or positive 20. These are the deviations for player B. Therefore, the squared deviations are 400, 100, 0, 100, and 400. If we add up those deviations, we get 1,000. Then, remember, we divide by n minus 1, not just n, but n minus 1 to address our degrees of freedom issue. So 1,000 divided by 5 minus 1, or 1,000 divided by 4, is 250. But remember, 250 has units of points squared. So we need to take the square root of 250 points squared to find approximately 15.81 points, and that is player B's standard deviation. Compared to player A's standard deviation, of 1.41 points, we can see player B's standard deviation is a much larger number, which confirms what we saw with our own eyes, which is that player B's performance is far less predictable than player A's. So what have we learned here? Well, 
we didn't need to memorize a formula because we just invented it. Every symbol in our standard deviation formula is going to tell us a part of the story we just walked through. So let's build a formula for standard deviation, which when we're talking sample standard deviation, we indicate with the letter S. So remember, when we found a standard deviation for player A and player B, the first thing we did was calculate the mean of the sample data, and we indicate that with X bar. Then we found the distance between each individual data point in the sample and the mean. We subtracted the mean from each data point. Any given data point in the sample will indicate with X sub I, and since the sample mean is X bar, our first step is to find X sub I minus X bar. Remember that when we did that, we got a deviation for one data point. But then, so that those deviations wouldn't cancel each other out when we added them up, we had to square each one. So we take deviation squared for each data point. Then we add them all together and we use this sigma symbol, the Greek letter sigma, to indicate the sum of all of these squared deviations. Once we had the sum of the squared deviations, in order to find the fair average for the sample, we had to divide by n minus one, and that gave us variance for the sample. At this point, remember, we had variance, but we still had a problem with our units. This variance, the variance for this example, was in point squared. So in order to fix that units problem, we had to take the square root. And taking the square root is what gave us the standard deviation s. And this is the formula for standard deviation. But remember, this isn't just a formula. It's a story that we've already walked through twice to look at the reliability of points scored by player A and player B. So this value, standard deviation, is really just the typical distance from the average. And it describes reliability or consistency or predictability. Remember, though, that this value, standard deviation, is sensitive to outliers because of the way that we squared the deviations and therefore put a greater emphasis on values in our sample x sub i that were further from the mean x bar. And because of that, because standard deviation is more sensitive to outliers, if our data set is very skewed, it can be helpful to pair standard deviation with something like a five number summary or the interquartile range because those are other different ways of measuring spread. And that can give us a more complete picture rather than just looking at standard deviation if, again, our sample data set is very skewed. So remember, standard deviation doesn't just describe data, it describes reliability. And that's why it shows up in everything from sports to science to investing. If you'd like more help or practice problems with standard deviation, or you just want to go further with probability and statistics, make sure to check out my full course linked down below.